man, it feels like it's been an eternity since I've actually talked about a movie or a show that wasn't so mainstream. Something that just isn't the unhealthy mess of processed food or media that Hollywood has been shoving down my throat since 2018. Shit, maybe even beforehand. Remember entertainment for the sake of entertainment? The thrill in the zone you actually find yourself in watching some originality and vision being displayed on the big screen that you can tell was not made only for the sole fact of turning a profit? That is one big pile of shit. Enter in The Menu, a late December release in 2022 that cuts out all of the typical Hollywood cliches that you've come to know and hate, and opts out to make a pretty incredible film, and a film that actually ended up making it onto my best of 2022 list. Which, if you want to, you can go check out. It's already March, so I understand. But last year, well, it was the worst year for the box office in literally my entire lifetime. But there was some pretty incredible media that we were blessed with. You just have to dig past the enormous pound of shit to get there. Without diving into the true nitty gritty of the entirety of the film as I usually do, because I really want you guys to go watch this movie for yourself, the menu follows a group of extreme elitists ranging from food critics to food enthusiasts to even a celebrity that are invited to a remote island to be given an opportunity or a better word would be the privilege that only few are able to receive. Oh yeah, that's more like it. To have an award-winning multi-course meal from the most renowned chef in the world, Chef Slowick, at his restaurant, The Hawthorne. Following Nicholas Holt and Anya Taylor-Joy as our main leads, the couple and, well, soon the rest of the guests start to uncover the intrigue and the mystery behind the esteemed chef, as well as why the menu has become so well-renowned. So we'll start with this. First off, the director lists the menu as a thriller horror comedy, and while I'm not here to completely sway the man wrong, I could easily say the menu is more of a horror comedy satire than anything. It knows exactly what it's trying to tell you and the message it's displaying, as well as it's pretty easy to say that it was executed to near perfection. One of the most intriguing parts of the story and the satirical messages within the film is that you could pretty much swap out the aspect of food and cooking or what it means to be a head chef or basically anything else. For example, when it comes to the film industry, it would be as if inviting a bunch of Hollywood critics, YouTube reviewers, as well as the simple fanboy and showcase what it means to create a film and the mindsets that one may or may not have and the direct outcomes that happen during that process. And while this isn't your main traditional horror like you're used to, like The Conjuring or Hereditary, slasher films, or even creature features, when it comes to the realism of it all and the scenario that these characters have been thrust into, it's an extremely tense situation. And while that couldn't have been achieved without the performances throughout the film, it surely would not have even skimmed the surface of its potential without the incredible performance of Ralph Fiennes who is one of those actors who's always so interesting to talk about because of the nature of his career, a man with the integrity and the obvious grace for his craft, as well as an insane scope of his acting range. A man that's in everything from mainstream blockbuster franchises like Daniel Craig's James Bonds, the Kingsman franchises in the Harry Potter movies, to more niche films like the Grand Budapest Hotel and the movie that I'm talking about now, to even animated movies like Cubo and the Lego series, the man truly does it all, and while I'm not someone who's even seen one-third of his legendary 63 movie slate throughout his career, I can easily say that this is the film that I've seen him shine the most. And because of that insane carry job as Chef Slowick, it allows Nicholas Holt and Anya Taylor-Joy to bounce so gracefully off his demeanor and leadership throughout the film, no matter the tone. And now, don't get me wrong, for the ones who aren't new to the channel, you know I love myself some Anya Taylor-Joy. I think she shines in pretty much everything she puts her mind to. Oh, get the fuck out of here, movie. You're not real. Anyway, 
Anya plays the character of Margo, a street smart and snarky character who also happens to have a good head on her shoulders. Interesting. A strong female character. Is that like a personal attack or something? And because of being a second choice to a last minute date, it also entails that she is the only person that's not supposed to be here tonight. She's obviously one of the most interesting characters because of the level of relatability that we find ourselves in her. When I mentioned previously of how this movie shines due to the fact that you can replace cooking or food reviews or what it means to be a chef with pretty much any other source of passion or entertainment, you truly feel it with Margot's character. She's not here to be a pretentious or a high-class pretend adult just happy to be here. She challenges the chef in that very nature of what it means to cook, to eat, to dine, to enjoy. And as the character dynamic between her, Chef, and Holt's character grows deeper and more personal throughout the film, it's not as if you're not making an active choice between who's right and who's wrong. It more showcases to you the different elements and structure that could define how people look at certain passions. In this case, what it means to be a chef, and more importantly, the relationship between the chef and its patrons. While I'm not going to be able to list and truly discuss all of the actors and the actresses' performances in this film, I would like to highlight the fact that a lot of the dialogue choices during this film were ad lib which further drives home the integrity and the craft of these actors and how incredible this character-driven story was. When it comes to a lot of the scenes, I mean, we're just eating food, so dialogue was made up on the spot. Adding to the realism that even though you're in such an esteemed fine dining restaurant, these are still just people at the end of the day who didn't sign up to be pawns of such a horrible night in order to be taught a lesson of the societal class structures. They just wanted to have some good food from a good chef that was paid for by some good money. Not a lesson. But because of the ad-libbing aspect, you actually get to know these characters, their values, their mindsets, their secrets, and why they're even here in the first place. And without that added touch by the actors themselves, by the time the horror elements of the story come into play, you wouldn't necessarily care. Like, this isn't a franchise. I have about an hour to get invested in these characters that I may or may not see die. And in order to achieve that level of relationship between audience member and one of its characters, you better do a damn good job at selling. And well, I can't say enough of how much the cast did for this film. Without giving away anything more and just continuing to gush over this movie, there's basically many different ways and many different perspectives to engage from when it comes to the story and the different themes at play. To the characters and the actors portraying them to a point where I'm very confident that I think anyone and everyone would enjoy watching this movie. So if you haven't seen The Menu, instead of watching something ass like most of these blockbuster franchises, or turning on to watch The Office for the 10th time in a row, Take the time to watch the menu. I don't really give out a lot of recommendations on this channel because I'm too busy having brain aneurysm. But as I said, take the time. I'm sure you'll enjoy yourself. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm going to make it a thing now to make a short for every movie or TV show that I review. I'm sure some of you guys have already seen that at this point. Just to give a little fun and quick review on it. So. I don't know. Look out for the shorts, I guess. It's weird because I don't know if you really recommend shorts. I imagine that I guess it will just show up while you're on the shitter or something. And if you have seen the menu, make sure to comment down below what you thought. And I actually have to ask you guys a question. When it comes to the rewatchability, how do you feel about it? That was honestly my main gripe of the film. So I do want to hear what you guys all think. But otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.